come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. How are we coming with that, by the way, Internet uh, Radio Superstars? I don't know. The world's pretty, like, dead right now. I think we're doing it. Yeah. Did we do it? I think so. Well, like I said, I before, think we just we just did it during pandemic. Sweet. I don't know if this is the world we want to dominate right now. <laughs> I think it's the only world we can dominate. Holly. I think I think this is our best chance right now. Yeah. Fair well, enough. I think I am then going to resurrect a bold claim that we are the fastest growing Internet movie podcast until somebody proves us wrong. Uh, these are the Internet radio superstars. Holly. Michaela. John. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by Colin. Colin, what creepy crawly things you show us tonight? Tonight we watched a movie called Slugs. The movie. The, yeah, it was <laughs> Slugs the movie. Like you're going to get it mistaken with Slugs the musical. Like I didn't know I was right. already watching the movie. <laughs> Slugs the documentary. Yeah. Well, I mean, it it, be, two years prior to this, that- they had to have Santa Claus the movie, you know? Yeah. Oh, well, it, it made me think of that scene in Spaceballs when he's going through over the merchandise. He's like, Spaceballs, the lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> Slugs, the soundtrack album, which I hope there is one. Because we'll Slugs, about that at some the point. stuffed slug toy. <laughs> <laughs> by uh, Blamo. Yes, by comes, Blamo. comes with a little container of salt. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Right. Disintegrate your own slugs. Yeah. Melt <laughs> slugs in the backyard with sluggos. Like the opposite, it's the opposite of those little spongy animals you used to put in water to make them grow. It's like put salt on the slug and kill it. Yeah, and it'll <laughs> slug be gone. Yeah. Kill slugs dead. <laughs> um, so this comes at us from the year nineteen eighty eight, and uh, was directed, directed by, by uh, Juan Picure Simone. Uh, going uh, by Colin, the, who's that? Well, he's going by the alias J.P. Simone on uh, on these movies that he did, but uh, we will know him on the Saturday Night Freak Show as the director of the immortal classic Pieces, the movie that is exactly what you think it is. What is it? That was the Just tagline. like this movie. Yeah. He pretty, much, he pretty much makes movies like, yeah, it's pretty much slugs. Yeah, it's about slugs. I, well, I, I respect that. <laughs> Yeah. I think he also did, um, I mean, obviously a Spanish director. He did a movie called Satan's Blood uh, back in the early 80s, which I saw and uh, don't recall a whole lot about and was not terribly impressed with. And, I bet uh, I know what it's about. Uh, <laughs> cult, cult, cult people and sex. Sex cult. Of Satan's people, Blood. Yeah. Satan's Blood. It's about cults? I'm in. Well, I think so. They. I remember they were in a house and yeah. Uh, there was, yeah. You know, oh, just a house. Cool. Yeah. And uh, also Cthulhu Mansion, which apparently is Another not house. really in, uh, uh, an H.P. Lovecraft thing at all. But yeah, but people have heard so of it. So if it's if it's called is, if it's called Cthulhu Mansion, what is it if not an H.P. Is, Lovecraft? Well, I mean, is it is it like how like old school plantations had names like in Gone with the Wind? It was Terra. <laughs> was it the Cthulhu Mansion? Like if that's the name of it. Yeah, it'd be it'd be great if there was just Count Cthulhu, but he was just like an old KFC type dude. <laughs> like he, he just happened to have the name Cthulhu, but he has tentacles <laughs> and little tentacles wings. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. He, yeah. He just happens to have tentacles. Yes, <laughs> his beard. So basically, is basically Davy like Jones from that Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Yeah, they do. Yes. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, those are pretty good. Pretty good CGI tentacles. Best I've ever seen. They were. Yeah, those were good. Um, so Slugs comes at us from the uh, horror subgenre that we all love called the eco horror animal attacks. Movie genre. Uh, they don't have that the label. Name, at, that the, I was going to say, that's title? not at the, the video store. That's not a section. Are these no. two different? Are these two different genres? Uh, I mean, e- I think so. Eco-terror and animal attacks. Is that what you said? I think eco-terror is like the happening, right? Well, they're always usually. See, this is what I'm thinking. Like Jaws is the anomaly here. Jaws is the and the birds are the animal attack movies, right? But then mm-hmm. the the added component of the ecological horror movie is uh, somehow uh, science 
or somehow mankind tampered with nature. And this is basically you are reaping the, uh, you know, the result. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This is humanoids from the deep. Right. Yes. Our piranha. The sl- right. This, the, <laughs> the sludge finally came to life. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know if it's a separate thing or if this is like a insects, animals, when nature attacks, because it's not really nature. Right. Nature has been. Uh, <laughs> You're right. Slugs are not nature. I agree. Yeah. Well, not, not these ones. These well, are mutant but, but slugs. It's, it's mutated nature is what you're saying. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Somehow we fucked with it. And now we got to deal with it. And now it's going to fuck back. Now that's a line I want to see on a movie. I mean, that was Humanoids of the Deep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was. Wait, wait, wait. Can we copyright that? They fucked with nature. Now nature fucks back. Like, that's (laughs) copyright 2021 Saturday Night Freak Show. Slap that on a new Humanoids from the Deep poster. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. To me, I still boil this down to it's just a creature feature. You know, like, I don't know if I get super specific with it. That's just what it is to me. Okay. All right. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like we can go subgenre into like that's the creature feature, and then we can go even further into the creature feature. That's why I love horror movies, damn it. Because you can keep on like going they off give on you so these much. like Yeah. You you find these different mind shafts, right? And you're like Colin, we need you to make one of those like scientific trees that's like genus, species, yeah. subspecies, but of like the genres of animal oh, attack. Colin, movies. that sounds like your life work. I, it, right? Yeah. It feels like I already have that mapped out like in my head, kind of like <laughs> I see the veins of the flow chart from the yeah. I feel like if Colin ever really actually completed this, he would just kind of like dissolve into the earth. Like that would be No, it. he would disintegrate. He'd see it's Thanos yeah. and he'd be gone. <laughs> he would like Jedi out of here. He'd just like vanish. Yeah, so That's then better. it's yeah. like he I woke would just drop to the ground. Right. I can see him in the robes. His yeah. Cthulhu shirt just hits and the dust goes. <laughs> <laughs> So you're saying I can't actually see them all. Eh? There always has to be one more to be discovered to keep you going on that. Uh, I think you know, so. Yes. For you, you're ready I think to go, Colin. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Colin, yeah, Colin needs that. Otherwise, he's going to uh, he will waste away. Yeah. Is that, or, or is he, does he just Dr. Manhattan off to another planet? Like, I've helped to these Earth people. I've solved their problems. <laughs> right. Yeah. What are the Martians watching these days? I'm I know. Yeah. Out. You got to go find Martian horror films and yeah. find out. What's, right. Uh, then what's then it's just them. like Hitler broadcasts in space <laughs> that you catch. And you're just like, mm, not what I wanted. <laughs> well, this movie takes place in the small uh, idyllic hamlet of Ashton. Is it Ohio? Ooh, I love I, did they say where it was? Oh, I'm from Ashton. There you go. That's my hometown. It's is not it this seriously. Ashton. Yeah, I was from Ashton, yeah, Ashton, Illinois. Go. This is uh, from uh, taking place in Ashton. Could be Illinois. We'll say we it's, We'll say it's from Ashton, Illinois. It looks like it. Okay, but basically, I was, I was sleepy say, American town. Know, I was gonna say, do we know where this was filmed? Because it honestly looked like it could be a small town in Illinois. Definitely a Hamlet. You're right. Yeah. Well, I know it's a Spanish film, and we, as we established, like a portion of the cast is dubbed. Uh, yeah. Which is always kind of because <laughs> no! they, were, they were filming it partially in Spain and I think like partially here. Actually, I don't know if they filmed any of it here to, does, to tell you the truth. Does it change from one actor to the other? Yeah. It's like one shot of this dude talking to this guy and all of a sudden he's dubbed. And I'm like, why? they're in different countries. Why? Yeah. yeah. Well, the doctor, the British doctor, who, like I said, I always uh, trust my science more when it comes at me with a British accent. Uh, he's dubbed and he's in the scene with the American guys. So <laughs> it's amazing. He's dubbed? Yeah. Um, okay. So what's the setup to this movie here? We have um, in the beginning, you know, basically, I think like basically saying this is, uh, you know, we're descending off the, the jaws branch of the family. We catch a, a couple of boaters, right? This girl in this amazing crop top, and this dude who's fishing and she's like about to go swimming or something and take that crop top off. And then he falls in the water and all of a sudden bubbling blood comes up and we're like, Oh no, Oh no. Horrible slugs title comes up. It's like a little volcano of blood. This is a lot of, <laughs> this is a real strong jet stream coming up from this water here. It's crazy. Right. They're, they're churling like in the fountain. water. There's, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, we've seen this before in like piranha or something like that. Right. Where somebody goes down and blah, 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 And then the yeah, blood no, comes it, up. And then you know that. This oh shit. Legitimately, this legitimately looks like James Cameron is about to uh, emerge in a submarine. Like this is like, <laughs> There is a craft underwater. Who knew yeah. slugs could draw so much blood? My God, this movie taught me something about that. I know. They got yeah. teeth. 
And it's also, uh, this scene has no relation to the rest of the movie because uh, all through the movie, they talk about the first murder or the first death, which is the uh, homeless guy. Well, would they say he's homeless, like a drunk derelict who's, you know, the sheriff's going to go kick him out of the house. But it's like, but then they keep talking about it like it was his house. Yeah, he he made he made a comment about being evicted, and there was an eviction notice. So oh, like, it was his house. He I just lost on, it. Yes. Yeah. So not homeless, just uh, down not in his luck, fellow, who kind of brings uh, what happens to him on himself because uh, we see him uh, come home from walking his dog, where he's accosted by like the uh, neighborhood ruffians, and he comes in and he goes to the stove, and on the stove he's got a box of pizza that has been sitting there for God knows how long. And just takes a slice out and starts eating it. And he's like, ugh. And then he throws it back in the box, takes the whole box, and just throws it down the stairs. Because apparently he's too poor to afford a trash can. And just throws it to the bottom of the stairs. Which, of course, he is was- why he has slugs in well, the Well, he basement. lives in the trash can. And this guy's Oscar the Crouch. <laughs> yeah. He is very cranky. He is, and apparently uh, for that, he gets eaten by slugs. We don't actually see this, unfortunately, and the movie is keeping the reveal of these nasty things. Oh, no, we do see them on the, on the floor. I, I was going to say, it's not, though, because we're real quick to be like, hey, slugs, like there's a yeah. bunch, like right Jump at the beginning right in the basement. after, after yeah. a little cold open, yes. Okay, so tell me, tell me about these movie slugs. What are we dealing with here? What are we looking at? Black like, slugs black like good like good looking black slugs like the photography on this is it's almost confusing to me because i'm like these look really good like are these any of these real or any of these based off of like any kind of a slug because they look pretty good because i know nothing about slugs so you could pretty much put whatever in this movie and i'd be like sure that's a slug i guess (laughs) right i'd be like no that's a snail get out of there that's a slug yeah (laughs) I wonder if they that's what they were, if they were like snails with the uh, shells taken off or something, because these things are horrible. gigantic. Um, They're huge. Because we're told yeah. later that a slug is usually about the size of your thumb. Sorry, folks. Also, I don't have any experience with slugs. I tried to look up what kind of slugs were used in the movie, but I was unable to find it. <laughs> um, but oh, the- I'm going to play it. I'm going to play a dangerous Google game here, and I'm going to Google large black slug and see what comes up. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, uh, you do that. Kyle, I thought you hopefully were going to be Hopefully I have my safe search on. <laughs> well, because it turned, oh, out no. that, it turned out that if you look up slugs used in the movie Slugs, you will get the official like movie monsterpedia entry, which has like the genus name, the Latin name of the thing, but these are, you know, giant slugs with uh, with teeth and all that. Oh, yeah. What do we got? Oh, Jim, what the oh, fuck? Jesus. What the oh what God. the fuck is that thing? <laughs> no. 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 That's not real. No, is guy, it in Australia? No. I bet it's in Australia. There is a, a slug literally just called black slug. Like that's the type of slug it is. And but, it looks just like the one in this movie. Oh, there you go. It's a black slug. Okay. So that's yeah, literally all that. it is. Well, all right. So this is 100 percent real. Got the, it. The photo that I, I need Kayla to find just, out where it lives, though. Make sure it's not near me. Hold on. Yeah, uh, Michaela, I would love to see something black just sliding up your back wall right now. <laughs> oh, good. The uh, oh, Europe. The, hmm. Yeah. Something like that. Well, the Is photo that she just showed us Romania. was uh, was actually oh, like this guy holding up like this gigantic thing that looked like a, a small a dog or something. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's weird. Um, okay, so and the other thing about these slugs, like they they catch light. Uh, very nicely uh, right when they're backlit because they shimmer and then yes. they wriggle in a way that I was like are they cold like what they do to these fucking slugs because they're like shivering as they crawl it's very gross <laughs> they just there's just a, a little bit of salt on the ground that's why they're shivering they're just like <laughs> sprinkle a little bit and they're just going Ugh. it's like we'll get well, we de- move. I mean at one point we definitely see a slug get murdered on camera so this is what can I you don't murder know. a slug? I don't what's, I don't yes, know what's real. Murder a slug. <laughs> and what's it was fake. literally stabbed. Like it's and yeah, you can murder sliced a slug. in half. Yeah. That it, slug was murdered. Well, it's a slug, so uh, it was there, violent. Can we have love lost for these Holly, things? <laughs> I was gonna say, Holly, if it was a snake, how would you feel about that? You know <laughs> she, she's like, kill it, kill it with fire. I'm done. Yeah. I mean, kill it. I yes, kill it all day long. However, save the slugs. I don't snakes. want to watch its guts fall out of it. That was disgusting. Yes, it Ew. was. Yes. 
Yeah, that's the kind of movie you're in for here, folks. Um, yes. Okay, so in short order, uh, after this guy's death, we are introduced to uh, our hero in the movie, which is a guy named Mike Brady. With no irony, Mike Brady, <laughs> right? I, I think that's the area these people operate in, the area of no irony. And it's like, and this is like very post Brady Bunch. It's oh, not yeah. even like it's before it. This is like, right. they know, they just right. don't care. Yeah, we're at least 10 years post Brady Bunch at this point. <laughs> Mike Brady. Yeah. Uh, he is a health inspector who is pressed into service to try and figure out what is going on with these uh, deaths. Because I think they find the old guy, the homeless guy, or he's not homeless, the uh, the guy in his house. And this is our first gore effect because he's been, his eyeballs have been eaten out, you know, and his face is all torn away. And there's slug trails, slime trails all over the floor. Ugh. Ugh. Yes. It's gross. We find Bloody. out later from the uh, the British doctor um, that a slug can crawl across the blade of a razor blade without ever touching the metal because it has this trail of goo, ooze, mucus, or whatever the fuck slime mm. uh, <laughs> that it uses. I'm like, oh, this is fascinating. It's, it is fa- fascinating. Disgusting, but fascinating. Yeah. This is why horror movies can be used as a teaching tool, my friends, and why. Again, yes. you want to, yeah, keep exploring. This, I was, I was, somebody <laughs> asked me the other day why I like horror movies. I'm like, look what you get with them. You can do like anything in horror movies that yeah. you can't do in a lot of other genres. That's why they're great. And you learn amazing factoids like there is more methane in the sewers than there are on some planets. Damn. This is what we're told by this the other seems, character. It's like a, this seems like a problem we should probably figure out. <laughs> <laughs> like, if that's true, I think we need to do something about it. Well, I mean, it is it is kind of true. Methane is, like, one of the biggest sources of pollution in the world, and it's mainly because of cows. Yeah. That's, a, that's like, one of the major contributions to global warming is yeah. cow farts. Yeah. yeah. We, should, we should get rid of all the cows. I will volunteer to eat as many as possible. <laughs> no, eating them is what causes them yeah, to like, raise more, yeah, No, Sean. I'm, I'm saying we don't, don't reproduce them. Just, we just keep eating them until we, you know, level off. The, I the promise of, this plan will work. The amount Sean of beef single-handedly we consume is it's contributing to this. Right. Sean, are you yes. going to single-handedly solve global warming by eating as many cows as possible? Uh, I've done more complicated things with Colin at midnight. Yeah. So. You two, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you two are going to man versus food this? Damn right. Yes. Yeah. How much you time we what? got? Good luck to you two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, okay. So we're interested. And then the other character is Don uh, Palmer or something like that. He is the, uh, I think, public works uh, director or something maybe of the town. Something. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Go with it. All, all we know is that he's got more responsibility and makes less money than he did as a plumber. That's, that's right. And he's a former former high school football uh, star. And uh, he's dating a slightly older French woman. Yeah, I think she's Sp- is she Spanish? Is she Spanish? I think so. But I'm not. Okay. I, I mean, she according French. to the movie. I, I think, think that's French. his wife because he has the two kids that he was playing uh, basketball or football with out in the yard. Okay. Yeah. I know he's got like he's got something to lose is basically what we're setting out there. He's got a family. Uh, Mike and his wife don't have kids. Um, right. Oh no, I remember the heavy-handed scene that set that up. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Mike doesn't get along with the sheriff because, of course, we have uh, you know for no good reason. Gets along with the sheriff. <laughs> yeah, there's a great he's scene a about littering. That was awesome. Uh, <laughs> um, the sheriff has some great lines. Uh, oh, like I'm gonna, great lines. I'm gonna shove my foot so far up your butt, we'll need a tow truck to get it out. That was a good one. Killer slugs. That's what a- are you crazy? What are you gonna have next? Demented crickets. What was the other thing? Uh- <laughs> it was rampaging mosquitoes. Would actually would be really bad. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that's that's, awesome. that's a we, we've done that movie, haven't we? That's way worse than that's, killer slugs. That's like, like that's uh, spreading bloodborne diseases. That's terrible. Yeah. yeah. Mosquito. Uh, Who's that? That's, popcorn. that's, real, that's or, real life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's right. We have that here. Um, okay. So the next, uh, the next victim. Oh, who was the next victim? Uh, Blondie. Uh, the, the, the blonde couple, the sexy ones, uh, the cut, the, the great cut to the sex. Wasn't it? Wasn't that the next one? I thought there was someone before that because we've also established that there's a problem in the sewers because that one lady with the little dog was like, you know, 
uh, yelling at them when they showed up at her house. He's like, I got a problem with my sewers. I don't care what you do, but blah, 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 blah. And he goes down in the sewers. And that was the scene, actually, where Don goes down in the methane-filled sewer, and he finds his drain pipe, and he reaches in there, and he's pulling shit out. And he pulls out, I don't know what the fuck that first thing was. The only thing I can think of is it was like the skin of a rabbit. Or some kind of animal with the fur on the back, it's like a pelt, pulls it out of the pipe. And then the next thing yeah. he grabs. <laughs> it looked like a oh, ball gross. sack. That's, it, uh, it, <laughs> it was fleshy, yeah. It, <laughs> it looked real. You, yeah. Michaela, Michaela hates to agree with me, but she wants to agree with me. <laughs> like, yes, it looked like a ball sack. It, it, it was one of those situations where you're like, what is that? So you kind of like lean forward and like squint to kind of be like, what the fuck am I looking at? And then you're like, you know what? It doesn't matter. It's fucking gross. Like, yeah, and then you kind of like dial back and you're like, God, why, why am I so invested in what the fuck this is? Well, he also pulled out whatever that second thing was, was this long, uh, you know, fleshy thing. And I'm like, ooh, because then oh, didn't he put his hand or he puts a, he had like a hook and he put it in there. And then there's that classic scene where like something on the other side of it pulls at it and he's like, whoa, 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 and he pulls it back. And I'm like, okay, we have just set up that there is the skin of a larger, like somewhere at the end of this movie, we're going to have like the big slug, right? That's where we're going with this. There's going to be like in Tremors, right? Too, Sean. There's going to be the giant slug at the end, <laughs> uh, which I would hope we need to just keep getting bigger and bigger. Like yeah, the block. Like, yeah. Like, like the the point where um, near more near the end where there's they have to get through the sewer thing and there's a bunch of the bubbling again. I thought like, oh, maybe we get like they all form together to make one big slug, <laughs> <laughs> the big bow slug. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, they, they do. <laughs> they fucking deep blue see his ass. Just. <laughs> They did at some point, um, uh, you know, well, I guess we'll get there, but there was a moment toward the climax where I was like, oh shit, you just made the wrong decision trying to try and kill these things that you are going to make them angry and make more mutant slugs, but we'll get there. The second uh, death, uh, was actually pretty striking. I'm, I'm surprised that we forgot about it. It was the old guy in the greenhouse. So there's this oh, guy. Yeah. Right. There's a guy in a greenhouse, and his wife is uh, comes out there with a plant. She's like, "What's these little dots on your plants?" He's like, "Those are slug eggs." So she goes in to go vacuuming, and this is fantastic because she puts on Hawaiian luau music and blasts it at top volume while she vacuums. So she can't hear him screaming when the slugs actually attack him because I think one gets inside of his glove. Yes. Yeah. And he can't get it out, so he's slamming his hand on the wooden table, which is kind of like this. Some, there's some like freaky moments because, like, if I, f I can kill bugs, but if I like turned and found a bug on my arm, I'd scream like a girl. Sure. So it's oh, freaky. Yeah. If this dude's got a slug in his glove, can't get it off, and he's slamming his hand down as hard as he can on this, like it's a freaky moment to me. Well, haven't yeah. you guys ever like? like gone for your like work gloves or something that's in the garage and you like shake it just oh, yeah. to make sure there's nothing in it and yeah. then like a spider comes out and you're like oh my god okay you know what? i'm done for today i that was a close <laughs> yeah. call yeah. wait i know it's have, only have, nine o'clock in the morning but i'm done have I'm you done. had that experience yeah oh shit yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why you take them out beforehand too so you don't put your hand in there and get bit i know i know? shake them oh, out but i haven't seen anything come out oh, yet god, thank yeah. god i'm surprised colin your your garage seems like arachnophobia i know i know yeah it is <laughs> I know I shake them out, but like I said, I, I am lucky enough not to have had something fall out of them because then Ugh. you'd burn them. Right. I mean, you're never putting those fucking <laughs> yeah. gloves on again. Straight with, in the fire. I should do that with my shoes. Now that I'm thinking about it every morning when I go to put my shoes in, I like, should turn those things up and fucking shake those out. So you don't know what's going on during the night. Every, every once in a while, any pair of shoes I haven't worn in a while, I'm like, there's something in there. Yeah. <laughs> but this scene escalates, right? Because it's not like you could just hit the, you, we don't see the slug inside, but apparently what I got out of it was that it had burrowed into the flesh of his hand and was crawling up in his arm. And so he reaches for, of course, what you do, the axe, and then he starts hacking away at his own arm or his wrist to try and cut the fucking Ooh. thing off. And I'm like, this is, this is great. This is when that movie <laughs> had me. And then right. nope. it escalates even more because then he accidentally knocks over some kind of flammable chemical. And when his wife comes out to help him, somehow they end up setting the whole fucking place in fire and they have a bottle of the shit and there's an explosion and the whole greenhouse explodes in a big ball of flame. Yeah, I was not expecting that. <laughs> no, 
<laughs> no, but that's that's great. That's our boating accident. That's our Jaws two boating accident right there. Yeah, it was just like it, it just like we're really overdoing it right here. This is a confluence of circumstances <laughs> that I don't think could I didn't think could happen, and then boom. Yeah, I really did not expect that movie to go that hard, but it did. Well. Yeah, and this is this is probably within the first twenty minutes we get to this point. So you're like, okay, we are yeah. we are good to go. <laughs> At this Cooking point with, with gas and slugs. It's, yeah, yeah. It reminded me of watching Alligator because Alligator really like when it ratchets up, it fucking goes, and you, you get sold pretty quickly in that movie too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that movie's a goddamn clip. Alligator, check out our episode. I'm trying to <laughs> convince somebody to put that fucking thing out on video so we can watch. Um, so there's uh, some domestic situation things going on here. There's a subplot involving a couple that is uh, friends with uh, Mike and Carol Brady. Her name's not Carol. Is it Carol? <laughs> I think it was. You know Kim. what, Colin? You could have said that. I don't like that. Makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> I mean, you might as well. <laughs> Yeah, but they have this friend. This is a subplot that's happening. Uh, they got a friend who he is involved in this real estate uh, um, deal where they're trying to get a mall built in the town. Right. So he's trying to put together the paperwork to actually have this happen. His wife's a big drunk, a very self-aware uh, big drunk. <laughs> a, a very self-aware woman. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I can't even explain how she just at one point she's like, I'm sorry, I'm a bitch all the time. Maybe it's my drinking. I do drink too much. Yeah. I should see someone about it. Just like, right. what? Right. He's ba like, basically, he just kind of like sighs and she's like, what's wrong? I'm, is it my drinking? I need to get help. I know. Like, it's just <laughs> that quick. It's like but, she oh. saw the first 15 minutes of an AA meeting and then walked out and was like, I'm, you know, what? I have the tools I need, you know? Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I think I understand. Yeah, it's and, great. But it's not just that, but it's like this couple talks to each other in the most kind of like stilted cardboard way, but it's almost like that. I mean, uh, part of it's that. that go ahead. Part of the reason is because it's dubbed. But. I mean, th that is, but it. <laughs> I don't. I, I'm going to say it works, but it, it's funny. It's, it, like it's, it, it makes it watchable. That They're it's very, so like, official with each other. Right. Good evening, wife. Good evening. Wife. How are you? Like, like it's like that, but it but it's so awkward. It's weird. It's fun to watch. Yeah, but this also leads me to a question that's kind of, I guess, extraneous. But like when they when we first introduced them in this kind of nice, like fancy restaurant, right? And she's all boozy McBooz man, and mm -hmm. so it's basically the two couples are there. And she's like, hey, you know, it's like, you want to go dance, husband? And he's like, no, you've had enough to drink. And she's like, well, not yet. What about you, Mike? You want to go dance? He's like, no, I should. And the wife turns to Mike. I think it's Kim. Turns to, to Mike and is like, we should leave. Is that the, the proper etiquette, right? When you're out with your friends and one of them is too drunk, you're supposed to go to save them from embarrassment? Is that what's going well, on? You're like, I don't, think the wife go home, wants honey. Her, I don't think the wife wants her to fuck her husband. That's why she's like, uh, yeah, let's leave. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, it's like the thing is, if you're out with another couple and one of them is super drunk and it's entertaining, like, no, no, you're gonna you're gonna ride that wave. You're gonna see how far it goes because it's hilarious. But when she's instantly like hitting on your husband, then you're like, yeah, time to go. Yeah. You know, there's very different levels of drunk, and she's in the opposite end of that spectrum, the bad end. That's right, because when they got home, do you find Pamela attractive? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. All, right, all right. Wait, no, no. The answer is what's it? You find Pamela attractive? She drinks too much. Yeah. <laughs> like, and like it's not an conversations. The no, it's not. But it's, but she was satisfied with it. it no, so she good. was like, "That's not really what I asked." Oh, did she? Say yeah. But then she comes out in negligee, and everything is right. okay after that. Yeah. Um, that's right because uh, so so that plot will develop because he obviously has to meet with the uh, the um, uh, developers, right? And so there's going to be a lunch tomorrow. But uh, tonight, I think uh, the wife, uh, Boozy McBoo's man wife, who is self-aware, uh, makes a salad. And while she's making the salad, we have seen the slug crawl into the lettuce. And she just slices through that thing and slices that fucking slug up into little pieces that kind of look like, uh, what do you call those things? The olives, you know, in a, in a salad. And this like, was rough to watch. I didn't <laughs> like this at all. That's right. We know where this is going. Or do we? I don't know. This movie surprised me. It was like, okay. But before we get there, 
we must address the teenage lovers, uh, high school lovers, right? Who um, are taught by Mike's wife, right? She's a teacher at the school. Um, right. The, the, the bitch, they call her nickname. What is she? The evil the bitch or something like that? The wicked bitch of the West. The wicked bitch. Like yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, these, 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 this couple, right, gets together illicitly after mom and dad leave the house. I was actually trying to figure out, I'm like, because he was like, hey, what's your old man going to say if he knew that, uh, you know, we were together? And I'm like, is he fucking somebody's wife? Then I'm like, is this the same girl from his class? Because you can't tell. They all look like they're 25 years old, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, I kind of felt that too, but uh, like, but I knew he was a kid. So I'm like, I think they're both high schoolers what i want to stop saying kids uh i think they're both high schoolers um i, I did think there's like is this somebody's wife is he over like he waited for someone to leave felt yeah. like he was fucking a wife mom and dad left. Read, it was it was a couple it was parents that left it was a man and a woman that left he waited uh, for okay. parents to leave yeah. i missed that part and then uh right when they're about to get busy on the uh basement bar he's like hey wait a second holy shit look at the stash of booze your dad has like wow, okay, buddy, <laughs> you have a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because later he's like, I need to recharge my batteries. Yeah, right yeah. in the middle. She's like, Don't stop, Bobby. Don't stop. He's like, Ugh, Let me get the Jack Daniels here. I got I got to yeah, recharge. He's definitely, he's definitely not as self-aware as Drunky McDrunk Face, and also he's very. Um, he does not realize that alcohol is only going to increase his problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks like Sammy Hagar. Is that what we're saying? He's got the Sammy Hagar. Uh, is like suffering. early Sammy Hagar, yes. Yeah. With like Neanderthal eyebrows. Like this This look is really, really jarring. Yeah. And severe. <laughs> there were some jarring styles in this yeah. movie. The guy who's got the curls is what I'll call them in the back mm-hmm. of his hair and everything. Yeah. Very much very party in the back. Yeah. I just feel like, I feel like that's just kind of the theme of the movie is jarring because there was some jarring hair that was jarring uh edits scene yeah. uh c- scene cuts some very jarring moments in this jarring music yeah yeah lots of jarring music it's like the interstitials and in sitcoms is like where you got this music from it's like yeah. 70s and 80s like cop and sitcom shows yes. all the our little transition music has been put into this movie yeah right i was gonna say like there are moments when the ca- a car will be like pulling up and it's like hero music and then it like sounds like chips and then the very end of the movie <laughs> like it sounds like taxi i was like what is happening it, it is very accurate movies. references <laughs> they are <Thank> you. <laughs> very good bravo yeah Thank you. There's, there's scenes like uh they're like dun 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 dun, dun and the the truck is backing out of the road. <laughs> like <Yeah>. that's it <laughs> It, That's it's all not doing. unlike last week's pick iced that had like i mean that was a cheaper shittier soundtrack but like in overdoing it for the situation it is on that same yeah. level i'm yeah. saying oh, yeah. like this whole movie they go hard i know that's the music is like yeah it's out of sync with what you're watching but it's great i mean yeah. <laughs> it's very <laughs> yes. dramatic uh, film music and you're like wow this is something's really happening here <laughs> as we walk right that was the motivation guy. like there's always something going on yeah. that's how we're playing this there's this man is eating a really, salad i find it really hard to take hero music seriously when it's following a station wagon yeah well, there was one scene where I think Mike was uh, sitting in the office and contemplating, and he kept on having these flashes of slugs in the garden because he has found uh, a slug in his garden. You know, his wife was gardening, and as he reached for it, the thing tried to bite him, and we're like, holy shit, these fucking things have teeth. Anyway, he's flashing to all this stuff, and there's this melodic music playing that I hope is on the soundtrack as, like, <laughs> track number three, A Dream of Slugs. Or something right. like it's that. Just, where, and he's looking out a window smoking. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, you remember those slugs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, great stuff. But anyway. Probably, the, probably oh, they have to ratchet up the soundtrack, though, because if you're just panning like a slime trail and you need it to be terrifying, how else will you know if it's horrifying without horror music? Because it's That's literally so just true. a slime trail on a wall. Yeah. Right. It's so true gross but not maybe necessarily they're painting an audible picture here yeah yeah uh well this in the sex scene um the uh that goes from zero to a hundred in like no time flat he's got to recharge his batteries she reaches down somewhere or steps out of the bed and the whole floor is covered with slugs she gets bit she goes down it's like the whole room hold on hold on 
Hold on, Colin. You were moving way too fast through this. Yeah, like, well, <laughs> no, we, we have to take the time. This is, I mean, uh, Colin, this is a meal we have to happens. savor. Right. <laughs> Okay, Colin's moving, moving at the speed it happens on screen, yeah, which is insane. Exactly. But uh, first of all, this is like what three weeks in a row now with like just upsetting sex scenes that just <laughs> took way too much. Like, what, right, get off this this path we're on right now. This is too much. Right. Uh, but when I will put away next week's pick of upsetting sex scenes. <laughs> <laughs> It was just a montage of all of them, Sean. Uh, that's what it was. I think <laughs> Colin owns the. I think Colin owns the DVD of this. But yes, that's what it was going to be. But it was. But it's Sean, so it was part two. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> but not as well known. Slightly shittier, awkward sex scene. <laughs> when he steps down and his foot gets bit, it is like a one inch in diameter hole in his foot that, like, <laughs> blood comes out like a faucet. Yeah, like I, this is where I was like, oh god, because I was like, can slugs really do that much damage to your body? Holy right, shit. it's like it's as if the slug like drills through his foot. I think that's yeah. what was happening because he had to faucet. Yeah, he had to pull it out, didn't he? And then like, uh, yeah, because that was what's happening. They they burrow in like right away, and we learn we learn later I, that that is, and this is why I was like, was this actually playing in? Because British science guy tells us that the slime they secrete is actually a paralyzing agent. And so maybe that was what was actually, it burns and it's a paralyzing agent because these are mutant slugs. Yeah. Is that why she couldn't get up? I think so, yeah. Okay, okay. that makes sense. I, was like, I, just will say, I will say, it happens say to me point, all the time. No slugs, but it happens to me all the time. <laughs> At one point I was wondering, I was like, how are these slugs like sneaking up on people? Especially like, with the noise they make. Yeah, right? <laughs> but I mean, I guess I kind of understand how in the midst of, of coitus, they wouldn't notice. So in that scenario, I like, I can see it happening. Right. My sex sounds like slug slugging as well. So <laughs> well, right. I can understand drunk, right? how it just blend right in. You're focused on other things like Bobby right. was. Yes. I got to get a yes, drink to recharge my batteries. Which like, I'm sorry, that's not how that works. Whiskey dick is a very real thing. Right. Like, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's not going to help his problem. Yeah. Not in this movie, damn it. It's the magical elixir that, bam, you're right back and ready to go. Apparently, <laughs> we don't find out because he never gets that far. Uh, once the girl goes down on the floor, she's writhing around with a bunch of slugs all over, which always go for the face. They always like take out an eye because I think the guy in the garden, we do get to see him. He gets his eye like eaten out and it's hanging out of his face. And then yeah. uh, she gets her eyeball eaten out. And she's like, Bobby, ah, help me. He can't like help her because it's a very tragic scene. And then he's trying to climb out the window and he falls and then we get that jaws scene where like he's dragged under the bed or something by the slugs and his hand is like knocking on the window and, oh oh and there he goes bam slug yeah. victim the, the only thing that would have chewed up his right. well the only thing that would have called this back is if somebody found that hand later <laughs> mm-hmm. but man but this I, scene I, but, the slugs eating him that quick was not this movie. This scene moves so quickly. You cannot even like grasp what's happening at first because it is just right. bam, 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 bam. Right. Like, it's like they're having sex and then she falls on the floor and then she's half eaten. Like, <laughs> yeah. right. and, <laughs> and everybody's screaming. Yeah. Was brilliant. <laughs> also, I know, I know we've kind of brushed over like how awkward the sex scene is. Was it? She was like sobbing, right? No, she's yeah, like Bobby. She more, 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 Bobby. Or no, don't stop, don't crying. stop. No, she was crying. She, her you guys, face was twisted up like cry? she was crying. <laughs> you guys don't cry. Oh, Is Sean. Oh, oh, oh Sean. Is, it, is it not normal? <laughs> yeah, sweetie. She's like it's normal. sobbing though. <laughs> I just get rid. I just get rid of it. It's like one single, you know, Demi Moore and ghost here. That's it one is. Thing. No, but no, she's it's, like it's, sobbing. It's, sobbing. She's no, I cry. Sobbing. I cry like the uh, the Indian uh, litter. <laughs> that's that's how that's why I cry during sex. Cries more masculine like that, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. It's cry. just like I'm still stone faced. Yeah. Just that one tear. You're just like I'm just so just be like, glorious tear. Right. Just like I'm done. <laughs> tear. No, she's like full on sobbing. That's why I thought too. I was like, why is she crying? I was like, yeah. this is gonna take a weird turn if she's crying right now, and I don't yeah. like it. It was really unsettling. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this is followed up by a scene uh, that takes place in a restaurant where Duder, who we were talking about, is trying to saw, you know pitch this. Uh, this is the showstopper, I think, of the movie, right? Where he's trying to get the uh, developers of the mall to sign on the dotted line to commit to the project. <clears throat> and uh, because he ate the slug that his wife served him the night before unwittingly, 
apparently, and I didn't know this, again, British science guy has to explain to us, but blood flukes are a parasite that live in the digestive tract of slugs. And so because she served him a cut up slug, because I'm like, how the fuck does he have slugs inside him? He doesn't. He's got a bunch of blood flukes. So he's feeling all crampy. He's like, oh, oh I feel you know not very good. And then he's got a massive headache the next day as he's at this meeting in this fancy Italian restaurant. I, lo- I love the juxtaposition of like, in a fancy restaurant, I'm not feeling well. I'm getting sweaty. Something bad's about to happen. Like, I, like I'm going to upset all these rich people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, Love this it. is that's I, how you do it. <laughs> I'm like, if you're going to do it, this is I how fully, you do it. <laughs> I fully appreciate that they, they went as far as, like, having the British scientists, like, explain all of these, like, blood things. I was like, I would have accepted that he's, like... You know, he ate a slug, and that's making him sick. Like yeah. I, you can stop that. Right. That's all I You're needed. Right. It, 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 as basic as it could be, I would have been like, yeah. he, ate a, he ate a mutant slug. Good enough for me. He yeah. he explodes that's all in I blood. Needed. They <laughs> yeah. go, they go hard, man. Yeah, he does explode in blood. First of all, his nose gives way, and like as he's trying to get a drink, and so the whole glass like fills up as yeah. his nose is shooting blood like a Keurig into that fucking thing. He's like, ah, oh, oh, he's screaming. Everybody's looking around aghast, and then. His eyeball explodes, or he falls on the floor. His eyeball explodes, and all these little slugs come out, and they eat his face. And it was <laughs> like... Mm. <laughs> yeah, like, you hear those stories of people who have, like, worms in their eye and shit. Like, yeah. this is what happens if you leave it. <laughs> cool. That was so gross. And, like, this happens really quickly, too. It's like he falls down, we cut to him, and his face is gone. <laughs> like, and there's it happens so quickly. Little worms everywhere. Yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love the Italian chef who's indignant that there's no, no, no there's no slugs in my restaurant. You know, who is probably no slugs here. Probably played by a, a Spanish guy putting on an Italian accent. I wasn't entirely sure. I'm like, is it guaranteed? Yeah. Um, yeah, he's he's concerned about his restaurant being infested. I'm like, I'm sorry, that man no longer has a face. <laughs> yeah, he's worried about the bugs. How did the slugs <laughs> okay. get in the restaurant? Um. So basically what Mike is, so Mike takes one of the garden slugs and then eventually the blood flukes to the British scientist. British scientist explains all this shit to us, as you just said, but he also comes up with the plan for how we're going to get rid of the slugs. Now at some point, and I was actually surprised that only one person, this is Mike's wife said, why don't we use salt? Right. right. Which I kind of figured was going to play into the ending of this movie, but I was wrong. Right. Cause I, <laughs> right. like we were all wrong. Colin. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, this is what it's going to be, right? They're just going to like, spray them with salt. Or salt yeah, and I, just, I needed, I needed that moment where they try it. Like, yeah, I just, right. I just needed to see them try it because in my mind, I'm like, okay, as long as I see that it doesn't work, I will erase like the image in my mind of, of bringing out the salt trucks. Cause that's where I wanted this movie to go. Yeah. I, th- right? I agree. I that's think what maybe... I was thinking, but it's yeah. because they don't get into the streets. Like they're yeah. not, in, they're, they're, they're not like invading the town. People aren't running crazy away as but that's what I wanted. Them. I wanted that kingdom yes. of the spiders. Like yes. there's a big festival and they're going right. to fuck it all up. Yeah. But they, and they <laughs> even set it up because the kids are going to a Halloween party in the woods. Yes. And we're like, okay, this is this. you're setting it up for this is where the fucking slugs erupt and there's just people running around pulling slugs off of their face and screaming. Right. Yep. I want a little I want a little more blob in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. I want a, I want sure. a little more mass hysteria. But apparently yeah, they didn't have the budget be, for that. Like, you know, earlier we were talking about what we you know, what we would call this genre or subgenre or whatever. In my mind, this is more similar to like a blob kind of movie. Yeah, but isn't that like an ecological horror movie? I suppose it's, I mean, the, it's, it's a I, fungus I, I mean, from space or whatever. Feature, but, yeah. Yeah. But that's how it feels to me. I wanted like the mass hysteria situation. Well, all of this. Uh, so anyway, the scientist comes up with a, a formula. He's got this. Uh, it's some kind of uh, salt based derivative of arsenic that if you put that on the slug, they like poof, explode. Uh, it comes in contact with the moisture in their bodies. It explodes. So Mike's like, can you make a whole bunch of that shit? He's like, sure. But it's getting them all together in one place. It's going to be a problem. And of course, Don, the public works guy is like, I think they're all in the sewer. And then this is where he lays out like what's actually been going on in the movie with a map. And he's like, it turns out that this whole area over here, like we can track the slug attacks back to this area of the sewer, which this whole area used to be a toxic waste dump. 
<laughs> like back in the day. And this is where they're going to build the mall. And apparently when they had the groundbreaking ceremony from the mall, they somehow unleashed the toxic uh, mutant slugs and created this whole problem. They were like living over there and underneath the toxic waste. Now they're so seeping into the sequel. Sewer. So there's a sequel. It's going to take place in a mall, right? Yeah, there is a sequel. It Slug what? mall. Is there? I'm pretty sure. What? There would be so many good opportunities in a mall, though. The food court alone. What, think about what you right. get away with. You'd never eat a hot. I mean, you could do hot dog, bad hot dog scenes, like three weeks <laughs> going. Why haven't we done this? I mean, we got to <laughs> have good slugs on the bad too. Hot dog scene, Sean. Yeah, that's true. But like you could do like a like a changing room scene in a clothing store. You know, like um, you know, there's so many fucking options in the mall, and that yeah. would be really fun. And then the chopping mall robots come in and blast them all, and then <laughs> send and them to cross over event. A, yeah, cross over yeah. event. Yeah, I think we could write this movie. We could write all of these movies, Colin. What are we doing with our lives? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. We're in a pandemic. Well, we're we're well, encouraging maybe, people to watch these movies, I guess. And true. I don't think the, there, no, I don't think there's a sequel. Well, damn it. Wrong. Then the, that means that the gates are wide open for yes. the Saturday Night Freak Show to make Slugs 2 Slugaloo. <laughs> Electric Slugaloo. <laughs> oh, we're done. Okay. Uh so um so basically the next the next step in the plan though right because now things are ramping up this is where the movie is ramping toward its conclusion and shit is starting to get real Mike and Don have to try and convince the official them to let them do the you know we got to get the slugs at which point Mike is told I think by one of the commissioners or something that you don't have the authority to declare happy birthday in this town which that's a pretty good line and uh, love it. <laughs> start using it. I, 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 Colin, are you going to use these at work in situations yes. that where they don't apply? Yes, I would love for you because that's that. what I do. I would, <laughs> now I wish I worked with people so that I could have a chance to say that. You can do it on Slack. Slack. Say, it works the dog. same. <laughs> you just you're just doing it to yourself all day long. That's that's what I've been doing. <laughs> Didn't I, I'm I'm backtracking to what we just said about um like how these how it was like built on a or these were from a toxic waste and like the mall construction like it made them come up wasn't that the pl the plot in bugs or bug was a bug yeah well, was there was that, a crack in the ground in which they came out of. yeah but was that crack because of uh something that what had yeah, cracked the ground like they were they were like a prehistoric bug or something yeah, that were like, like oh that was an earthquake was that an, an earthquake? earthquake that I think was that was it. an earthquake. So that it's like mankind wasn't responsible for yeah, with them. You got but you got to look at movies like uh, was it Squirm, which is about the worms that mm. you come up, and like frogs, which ironically is about like all sorts of different animals that are insects. That all <laughs> which ironically not about frogs. Yeah, I think oh, there no. are frogs, but it's mostly like it's everything. Uh, yeah, <laughs> a lot of squirrels in that movie. Really weird. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> killer squirrels. <laughs> Um, oh, killer, killer flying squirrels. Have we done this movie? Come on. No, but we've done killer flying fish. That was Piranha 2, the spawning. If you haven't seen it, they right. fly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so flying fish, ladies and gentlemen. So um, what the uh, so so now we're in the in the final act of the movie after Beaker Science, where the scientist is mm. seen mixing colored liquids from a from a bunch of long beeper, beaker. That's tubes, science. Yeah. Into a That's big vat. Um, like when I see when I see people on like the president go to a lab, he's like, "This is where we're working on the virus." I and I don't <laughs> see large colored cylinders. I'm very disappointed. Yeah, you're like, "That's not like, real. Mm -hmm. That's not how no, they do how it in real life." Uh, yeah, yeah. How we figure how this out? I know you're a scientist, mm -hmm. right? You be, well, they're wearing a white lab coat, Michaela. That's how. Okay, we well, know. that's a start. They ah. also be a doctor, so I need it's more. Right? <laughs> I need cylinders, cylinders of colored liquid. Yeah, like Holly has right now. Okay, so I was sitting there going like, because we we do cut to the the teenage party in the woods, and I'm like, and they, we keep cutting back between that and uh, Mike and his crew, which are going to go down. Oh wait, wait, wait! Before that, his crew, right? Because he recruits Don. This is great. He goes over to Don. And he's like, Don, I need you to. We got to go down in the in the sewers, and we gotta we gotta fight these things, and blah blah blah. And he's like, okay. So Don goes in to have a heart to heart with his wife. We know. When he walks through that door, he knows that there's a potential that he's not going to come back from this mission that he's going to undertake. He stands there for a minute before he goes and talks to her. Then he's like, honey, I'm going out. She's like, you're going to be going long? He's like, no. He's like, what? She's like, what you going to do? He's like, well, to tell you the truth, I'm going to go with Mike. We're going to go down the sewer and we're going to kill a bunch of killer slugs. <laughs> and then, but how about 
when I come back, we get naked and have some wild time together. She's like, that sounds great, honey. Big smooch. <laughs> that he leaves. Real relationship goals, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Honest, they have good communication. I like it. Right? I know. He's so at this, at this point, you are rooting for Don to make it home. Uh, so he will be able to have naked wild time with his wife. So we keep cutting between, like, you know, these guys trying to pull manhole covers off. <laughs> We need science. Uh, the British guy yeah, is the, like yeah, science guy, like this yeah. part. British guy can do science, but can't open the sewer, which is the I ultimate mean, stereotype. Like he's got a big brain, but small muscles. Okay, but those are difficult to fucking open. You usually have to have a pry bar to flip it. Yes, this I, I said it in our group chat, and I'm saying it again. This was the most realistic part of this movie was how difficult this scrawny man was having, like trying to lift this manhole because there's no way he would have been able to. And yeah. he was using a pickaxe, which was yeah, awkward most enough for him to use. part in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Hands down. <laughs> but these two scenes are connected because it turns out that the, because uh, I was wondering, like, how are you going to, you know, you're in the middle of the woods. You're going in the sewer. How do these things connect? It turns out at the teenage party, there's a little bit of drama because there's a girl there who, and there's I these am. two guys who are uh, putting the moves on her. And when they get or one guy gets upset because she won't put out, basically. And so she wanders off into the woods where the other guy dresses up to remind us that this is a Halloween party for the one scene in the movie. The <laughs> right? guy puts on a, yeah. a skull mask and tries to rape her in the woods. She gets away and she hides in the sewer. And we're like, oh, there's a sewer pipe right there. OK, I got gotcha. you. Then right. apparently she's eaten off screen by the slugs. We just hear her screaming yeah, I was, in the dark. I'm I was kind of, we didn't see it. Yeah, I know. I am too. I was kind of sad. Uh, I, I like Pam. Like she what? seemed like the the only like their character. The dude's like, "You're a real bitch. I'm leaving." She's like, "All right, whatever." Like she seems very realistic. Right. It's like, go away, I was, asshole. I was more pissed that she died. Like, why did he too. die? Right. Right. Why couldn't he, while chasing yeah. her? That's if what we're made gonna, me mad. If we're gonna do you this, push scene, him into the sewer. You know. Yeah. Because this is a so horror crazy. movie. It's a hor it's horrifying. What happens to innocent people that get killed like indiscriminately no. by creatures? No. Ham deserved better. <laughs> Ham okay. deserved better. Ham yeah. deserved better. Yes. I get you. That's justice why, for that's Pam. Why it's sad. That's why I was horrified by the scene. Fuck Barb. Uh, justice so. for Pam. <laughs> justice for Pam. Hashtag. Just for Pam. Yeah. So uh, we also get that scene where uh, Don is like, Mike. Now let me get this straight. You want to take a substance that explodes when it comes in contact with water down into the sewer. Mike's like, yes. Okay. Well, there they go. So they go down in the sewer and they find all these slugs. And of course, the first thing that uh, Don is like, is like, whoa, whoa, wait, I got an idea. They're just all over the place. He's like, I'm going to electrocute him. So he cuts a uh, wire, live wire drops it in there. And we do get that scene of all these slugs being electrocuted by the eighties blue electricity animation. And I'm like, Oh shit, this is where we are going to get the super mutant slug. Yeah. Unfortunately, no. it's not to be. No. I mean, is it unfortunate Sadness. though? Because we do get massive explosions. That's true. It, it is unfortunate, but these slugs do so much fucking damage at the size they are that, like, at least they make up for it with that, you know? Yeah. Yep, and unfortunately, they do get Don. Don is not going to go back for your naked wild time with his wife because he, uh, I think, can't remember if there was an explosion or something. He falls in his Remember, pig. they get, well, they get stuck. They were going to go one way according to the map. It was blocked off, so they had to find another entrance to get to the manhole. Because they're going to go up the manhole before the scientist dumps all the liquid down that manhole. But they're trapped and they can't get through because there's that bubbling pit right by the ladder that's got a bunch of slugs in it. So they try and go out another door and and uh, what's his name? Post. Don. He's prying it open and he gets knocked backwards by a sudden surge of water right into the pit of slugs. And then he proceeds to get slowly taken apart as he sinks like a rock. Yeah, in that tank. I don't, whatever dummy they were using, they had tied too many cement blocks to it. Because whenever they cut to him in the water, where you'd see somebody floating down, he's just going, Phoom, yeah, right down to the bottom. And all the little but slugs it, floating around around him in the water. Yeah. That was great. And then we get a I cliffhanger moment 
because Mike like goes out on a cable over the thing and is trying to reach down and grab it. He's like, give me your hand, Don. But of course, Don's wearing a glove. So I think that came off or something. Don's like, no, save yeah. yourself. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it starts bubbling up and half of his face is gone. And we're like, oh, no, Don, Don. It was I feel bad for Don. I feel bad, Don. I kind of feel bad for Don. I got, I got it. Uh, I got Sean in Jaws of Revenge vibes out of the scene. I'm just yeah. like, aw. <laughs> I don't like it. Yeah, because they set up that scene. This is why this movie's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. they, we're waiting for Don to go home. And now Don's not going to be home. He may as well be, uh, honey, Sorry, Don. I'll be right back. His name is uh, Dead Meat. It's stenciled right across his forehead yeah. in that yeah. scene. Yeah. Um, I mean, wait, honey have, you, honey, have you seen my red shirt? <laughs> I need to put that on before I go. Yeah, I mean, we knew. As soon as as soon as soon those lines are spoken, I'm like, well, Don's not coming home. Yeah. And I like that, uh, you know, because the sheriff finds the scientist trying to open this uh, uh, manhole. That would really never, as far as I know, paid off because the next thing I remember is Mike coming out of the manhole and he's like, turn the fucking thing on now or whatever. And they dump all this chemical down there and it causes a chain reaction, which I did not expect. I got to tell you. Uh, where every goddamn manhole in the uh, city explodes in a gigantic ball of flame, so much so that we see buildings exploding. I mean, like on Main Street, there's the glass shatters, big That's fireballs coming out. There's cars going up in, fl in flames. Great miniature work here because, like, yes. I actually thought that some of these were, like, did they fucking rent down a, a vacant building and blow it up? But apparently they're miniatures. <laughs> they were destroyed. They, they look pretty solid. Yeah. yeah like they did good miniature work. Miniatures. Yeah. <laughs> so the movie, although Michaela was hoping that the army would show up and bomb the shit out of them and drop salt. Hell yeah. I mean, my, uh, and we got a bunch of explosions coming up. <laughs> the whole town exploded. No, that was, yeah, it was great. It was great. I just yeah. thought it would have, like, this movie's too serious to use salt as a weapon like that, you know? I, I think I expected this movie to be a little more, like, tongue-in-cheek, you know? So I thought right. it would really be, I like, was, salt weapons, you know? Right. Or I thought they would do, like, when the wife says, why doesn't somebody use salt? And she, like, hands it to him. He's like, salt! You idiot woman. And then he, like, throws it over his shoulder and it lands on the slug and dissolves. Like, that's how they could have solved the problem the whole way if he just listened. <laughs> you know, I mean, it could have been, been really, really badass because they could have had the rock salt, like, rifles and just been shooting them, you yeah. know? So then they explode and they get fried by the salt. Yeah, they make salt guns, like, in Super Soakers or something. And just I there, feel Sh like, Sh Sh Sean, what you were saying, I feel like that would have been in the James Gunn version. Probably. Yes, Probably, right? yeah. Absolutely. That's right, because we are thinking true. of Slither, of course. When we're we are watching thinking this of movie. Slither, yes. Um, yeah, they did. They were about the same size as the creatures in uh, Night of the Creeps, also, those slugs. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I think they maybe did address something to do with salt as a weapon. I'm not sure. There was one scene where uh, the teacher, Kim, comes home, if that's her name. I'm sorry if I'm getting it wrong, the character name. But Mike's wife comes home, and Mike's fucking around in the garden. And he gets up and he's got a bag of something. And she's like, how's it going? And he's like, they're just eating this like candy. And he throws it away. And I'm like, was that the salt, uh, whatever, sl slug be gone mixture? Could have been. Yeah. I think so. And that's why she mentioned it. Because he's like, oh, yeah, good idea. Why didn't you mention that? Because maybe he was doing it. I don't know. He might be right. Yeah. So maybe, maybe the movie did address it, but not clear enough. And that's why they had to come up with the arsenic based uh, slug killer. But I did also appreciate it. So I was like, are the, uh, is the sheriff who's basically been a hard ass, uh, not listening to the young whippersnapper who's telling him what's actually going on. Um, gonna, you know, are they going to get along here at the end? Cause he's like, Mike, I'm, I'm sorry about your friend. And Mike turns on, he's like, go to hell you know like or something like that he like totally like you weren't helping at all and go fuck yourself and then his wife pulls up and there's a tender embrace to tender music uh from taxi from on taxi. the soundtrack yeah. as a british guy kind of wanders in is like ah yep that's right it's all it's all good now you've, you've been <laughs> he wanders is like oh you're still here yeah uh, you can go home now uh, until <laughs> The last shot of the movie reveals that there is a possibility of a slugs too, because at least one slug has survived and is living on a oh, sewer grate. Vengeance. Yeah. Right. Have they, the, we, we've done the ending where somebody like they do that slow zoom into that one remaining slug and then somebody walks by and crushes it. Right. <laughs> and just great. steps on it and squishes it. Like, yeah. Like yeah. I've, seen, I've, that. Yeah, I've, I've like seen, seen that. Yeah. I've seen it too. That. Right. 
I feel like I've seen it somewhere. So, yeah. dear Brailler, please let us know. But I feel yeah. like I've seen it. That feels like feel the like postmodern ending. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't have yeah. had that in the more uh, direct, innocent 1980s. Right. Yeah. They, were, they weren't smart back then. We're just like, no, it's uh, it's the slug. It's a lot. Yeah, because uh, the threat, the threat is always, you yes. have to be vigilant, right? The threat. The ever-present always, threat, yeah. yes. They can always come back. That's right. All right, well, that brings us to the end of the movie slugs. But you want to know whether we would recommend that you watch it. Well, to find out that, you're going to have to stick with us while we uh, read some of your mail. And to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman, and his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Hey, thanks, Igor. You think Igor is related to slugs? Well, he has the same reaction to salt, so yeah. I was going to say, we've tried the salt trick on him, and that's why he doesn't have a left hand anymore. (laughs) Um, But, uh, I mean, it'll grow back in, what, a month, Igor? (gasps) Okay. (laughs) And as far as we know, the blood flukes have eaten his brain, so who knows? Right, Uh, but he's still got that one part that delivers (laughs) mail, which is great. One eye does hang out. You know, so I mean, there's that. Uh, okay, so uh, we want to remind you how you can get a hold of us. All you got to do is follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or you can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show, Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, Sean Taylor writes in and he says, you four superstars are a hoot. Keep up the world domination. As a movie fanatic myself, I completely stumbled upon your podcast about three months ago and have been binge listening ever since. I'm happy you guys tackle obscure cheesy B movies, so to speak. So since I do feel these type of movies bring out pure laughter and fun in your shows. Aww, yeah. Thanks. thanks. What was it. Thank you. Uh, Sean Taylor. That was a Sean Taylor. Sean, oh. uh, did you? Are you sure you didn't write this? <laughs> right, I, tr- I tried to write in, but I only changed the one letter. <laughs> oh, he spells his name different than yours. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, just like, it's from Sean too. Taylor writes in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like that seems a little. Uh, well, from someone who's been called Sean Taylor a lot in his life, yeah, that, welcome to the freak show. <laughs> Uh, well, Grant Parrish wrote in and, uh, he said, uh, that today had been a really tough day, uh, but then he opened Facebook and he sees posts from the Saturday night freak show. And he says, it just helps me power through to the end. He said, thanks guys. You're more precious than you know. And that kind of triggered a, uh, thread. I think that we were all, uh, looking at, um, we were all kind of fawning over it to be right. honest. A lot of crying emojis. Yeah. We are, we are very precious in many ways. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would but just thank like, you. Yeah, Grant and uh, and Travis and uh, everybody out there is listening to this. It's like often, you know, we read uh, some of these comments and, uh, you know, I mean, it's really touching to think that, you know, I mean, basically we started this as a, just a thing where we'd get together and talk about our enthusiasm for movies, you know, and just kind of sharing that. And to know that, you know, we've actually connected with uh, with people is, um, you know, out there is. Uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. It is. Uh, and we appreciate it. Yeah. Right, especially like like I know we said this before, but we have these conversations whether they're being recorded or not. You know, like this <laughs> yeah. is just how we talk to each other. This is the kind of stuff we talk about. You know, we have a group chat that like once a week, at least one of us is like just a random movie thought pops in our head and we'll talk about it. Like this week, I was like, what happened to Rosamund Pike? You know, and that was like a discussion right? we had for a day. You know, we went so, through that. We wrote a sequel to Ghost. Yeah, we did. <laughs> we, this is this is what's happening in our chat. So coming it's, soon. It's a- the fact that people want to listen to that is a huge compliment because yeah. we're going to have that conversation regardless of whether you're listening or not. Yeah, right. yeah. but we're we're glad that you like it. So mm-hmm. thank you. Yeah, yeah it, it seriously gives me life. Like I'm not saying that to be like. That's not a loaded comment. I'm not like exaggerating. It really does. So thank you. Thank you all seriously for listening and for, for writing in, uh, about tonight's yes. movie, which was called slugs. Robin Linneman Silverberg wrote in and said a five pound bag of salt should be good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying, man, you would think Military so. But yeah. Salt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, films are ghosts wrote in and said, having a party thrown in the woods and not wrecking havoc on the party goers is a huge missed opportunity in this movie. I suspect there were some budget cuts or an issue with the studio. 
Uh, what are some of the other biggest missed opportunities in horror films you can think of? Well, oh, I mean, damn. I, I, it's, I, when she, um, or sorry, when our, when our other listener mentioned the five pound bag of salt, I instantly thought of, we needed a John Goodman, an arachnophobia character, but he's the salt truck driver. Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <He needed> that. <laughs> that would have been, see, ah, oh, God damn it. Yeah. I'm That'd sorry. I have breaking news happening in real time. So apparently my husband heard me say what happened to Rosamund Pike and he just texted me and said, Hey, she's going to be starring in that wheel of time book to TV adaptation that's filming right now. Whoa. So apparently I'm the only person in the world that doesn't know what's going on. In her career. <laughs> live, live updates. Colin, please put in a, an alarm. Hashtag breaking news. Rear, rear. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. You heard it here first, <laughs> like a week late. Yeah. On Saturday night freak show. Um, sorry. Yeah, I can't, you, Toby. I can't think of anything right off the top. No, uh, I mean we've uh, I mean, we pointed we've out this before. Right, we've done this before. This is I and it sucks when we get put on the spot and we can't think any. But we've done this a lot. Uh, Craft yeah. Legacy. There's a missed opportunity, but that's yeah. just recent. I feel yeah. like I did it like a week or two ago. It was like the ending of this movie should have gone this way, and it didn't. But now I can't remember oh, which nice. movie that was. There's a lot of talk of that nice. Yeah, maybe it was last week's maybe, episode. Yeah. yeah. Icicle, come on. I, yeah, I mean, I mean, that's why you're listening to the show because we rewrite most movies as we're doing <laughs> <Yeah>. this. <laughs> like, it'll be better. I'll just blow up. <laughs> uh, well, Michael Whitaker wrote in. He said, "I will forever be disgusted by slugs because they were a constant pest around trash cans when I was a kid. Every so often, you reach for the handle and you touch something that would just not feel right. Yeah. That would disturb me too. Yeah. Yeah. Our- I don't know that I've ever actually seen a slug around here. Do we get slugs in this area? I don't know. I have, I also have not seen or experienced a close encounter with a slug. I've just seen big snails. So, okay. Yeah. Like, I don't know. And I'm... even then, like, I don't see a lot of snails around here. When I went on vacation to the Dominican Republic, it rained and there was more snails than I thought. <laughs> I thought possible. you were going to be like, yeah, it rained, rained snails. snails. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, Holly, how have you not told us this before? I felt like it did. There was, they were everywhere. There was thousands of them everywhere. And it was like That's the craziest gross. thing I've ever seen. Ugh. That would have been a better story for the start of the podcast, Holly. Raining snails. Yeah. Wow. Uh, uh, Ryan Handsome Jansen writes in. He says, I don't know if you guys are metalheads, but there's a pretty sick metal band called Sludge. And all their music is mollusk based. To quote, they are esoteric, <laughs> interdimensional, extreme metal in praise of Mollusca, Molusk- the true lord of reality. I love that metal uh, bands create mythology like that around their band. Right? I love it. <laughs> right? Is this Norwegian metal bands? It sounds like something they like do. <laughs> they have an entire band dedicated to it yeah <laughs> i love it i love the commitment to the bit like That's you know? it's like nerd metal yeah i think most black metal everybody's like so afraid of them i mean except for the ones that are burning churches i think they are all just joking like i think they have a sense oh, of yeah. humor and it's like if you're on their wavelength you get it uh dj molka says it looks like i gotta find this one to watch before saturday and yeah, we hope sure you do. do play along slugs um <laughs> yeah Free on prime. that's right uh last week we watched a movie called iced uh carson snar writes in and says that reminds me of a movie called shredder from 2003 it's not great if i remember but hopefully iced is more entertaining we forgot to mention shredder on our uh you know because that would be the other i think right uh well right. to be honest colin that sounds like a biopic about a ninja turtles villain so it does yeah that's why well it has, <laughs> I've, I've seen the the poster art and it is like a close-up of a ski mask in the visor and it says shredder. to be honest I mean, it sounds like to be honest it sounds like a movie that warner brothers is going to put out next year but it's isn't it like a cereal. shredder is it a snowboard another snowboarding movie I don't know. We'll, we'll have to check it out. Um, I was going to say, this is a real big gap for us. We should uh, dive I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, the previous week, we watched a movie called Night Beast. Uh, yeah, yeah. Pat Hetfield wrote in and said, you've convinced me. I'm going to watch this movie as soon as I get a chance. I was avoiding it because I thought it sounded repetitive, but apparently it's not. Here's another night movie. This is for Holly. Another All night right. movie that I watched in the 80s. And I remember enjoying Night Shadows with Wings Hauser and a few other big to us horror exploitation fan names. It fits all the requirements to be on the freak show. Holly's Googling Uh-oh. it Holly, right, right now. Yeah. Night Shadows. Right now. Yeah. Okay. So Looking there you go. Right now. With Wings Hauser. 
Holly, go the whole year. Night movies. Do it. Yeah, Dedicate yourself. Right. Come on. And, uh, Challenge accepted. <laughs> Travis Legler write in, wrote in and said, uh, oh, because this is a conversation we had on the Night Beast episode about the proper way to pack, right? Should you put the, the uh, suitcase on the bed? Yeah. And yeah. bed packing. No bed packing, remember? Well, Travis. What if, what if it's naked bed packing? Naked like, bed we packing. We just go all for it. The problem is your suitcase is fucking dirty and you're putting it on the bed. That's the problem. <laughs> I think you have a... There's a okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> no, we airports and hotels are no. fucking disgusting. The issues are too deep. We can't get <laughs> too into deep. It now. Travis says so. Whenever I pack, I just put my bag on the bed and pack. But I don't have bags with wheels. I've got an old school big leather bag. I always pack it with a pile of clothes I have waiting on the bed. Me too. I know, Travis. But I if your you. bag touches the floor of the airport, the inside of a plane. The, your hotel room it's still touching all that shit whether it's got wheels or not man all right you know, i for, i had forgotten all that stuff yeah. by the time i put that bag back on the bed it's like whoop. fair warning travis fair warning so now we are going to go around the table the virtual table as it, someday right we're all going to be back in the same room but for right now the virtual table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie slugs starting with Michaela. You go first tonight. What did you think about Slugs, the movie? Well, I wasn't sure what to expect. I didn't know if it was going to be like a Night of the Leapest situation where we're seeing like close ups of like slug footage, but there's no actual slugs like in this movie or something. I didn't know how budgeted and well produced it was going to be. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised at everything I got. Uh, I did not expect it to be this gross or this gory. Um, and like, I wouldn't say it's suspenseful, but it is horrifying. Like it, like the injuries these slugs cause people are pretty fucking terrifying. And them just being slimy and like slithery on top of it, it it does bring up a lot of the same feelings as like Night of the Creeps or Slither, you know, in the Blob. Even like I, I was definitely feeling the Blob through a lot of this, and that is a compliment. Um, as far as uh, the question earlier about missed opportunity, I thought about something with this movie. That like when they kept talking about sludge a bunch in the beginning, I was like, how is there not like a Dracula 1979 scene where like they have a card written down of sludge and they cross out the D and the E and they're like, right. They're like, oh, you card. Oh, my God. Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> Flip it around, asshole. Right there. You know, like, but this movie's too That'd be good. That, you know, like this- oh my god they're slugs yeah yeah exactly like that's how they figured out is by just like crossing out the letters that would have been delightful but this movie is very <laughs> self-serious and not campy and like but but it's a good thing it pulls it off like it has the budget and it has the effects and it has the like the i don't know just creativity to really pull off being that serious um so i would definitely recommend it it was fucking gross it was really gory and I thought I knew what it was going to do because, you know, we've seen a lot of these animal attack movies, but it it, it still kept me guessing. And, it, you know, it it did some good things. Good acting. Surprisingly good acting. Definitely recommend it. Uh, I mean, yeah, there's no movie. I, you know, we talked about the ones it reminded us of, but nothing quite like it, really. I'm going to go with Holly. What do you think? Slugs. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Like, I. I knew a little bit about this because, you know, a few years ago I picked Slither and I um, I looked up a little bit about this because I knew there was a lot of influence from this for Slither. Um, so I had some idea of what we were getting into, but I hadn't seen the full movie. So I got to say, like, I was surprised. Like, I didn't know this movie was going to go so hard. It, it really did. Like, I... I mean, once Colin said it was the same director as Pieces, I was like, okay, well, I kind of have a better idea of how, like, the where it could go, the potential that it could have. Um, but, yeah, it was surprisingly horrifying as far as, like, the gore and as far as just the, the creepy crawliness. And um, it was pretty gross. It, it definitely did a lot of surprising things. I was not expecting so many explosions. I think that was the biggest... <laughs> That was the biggest surprise right? for me. It, I mean, the fact that it wasn't just at the end, like halfway through the movie, we got a pretty big explosion. And then like at the end, just the whole town blows up. I was like, Jesus, this is like <laughs> way more than I was expecting, especially because when they, when he was like, I'm going to electrocute him, he starts electric. I was like, really? Like, I feel like we see that all the time. They always kill it by electric, electrocuting it. Like the, the night beast, we, hear, we see it all the time. 
but no, no, they go harder and the entire town blows up. I'm like, okay, this is solid. I'm on board. This is fantastic. Um, so yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. Um, it moves at a good clip too. Like that. I was not bored during this movie at all. It was, it was a good time. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, like we were saying, it takes itself seriously, but in, in a way that like, we can laugh at it now at like the ridiculousness, you know, it's got that factor, um, that we look for in movies like this. So yeah, it was fun all around. I really enjoyed it. Um, I, yeah, I'm going to definitely recommend it for sure. It was a good time. Sean, what did you think? Ah, uh, slugs. Um, I think that um, the things I appreciate most about this movie is, uh, like we said, it just it starts going like right off the bat, which for a movie uh, that I thought was going to be kind of a slow burn, I thought we were going to get like hints of the slugs. Oh, they're in a bush. Oh, they're crawling over the thing and they're staring at people like planning, <laughs> planning their attack and shit. Um, so I thought we were going to get slow and then build up to like big attacks and stuff like that. And this really started going like right off the bat. Like you knew there were slugs in this movie and there were a bunch of them coming at you right away. Um, I think because uh, I, I, I don't know what the budget was in this movie. I tried to look it up, but I, I couldn't see it. I think because the budget was probably a little bit lower, they couldn't do um, like smaller things with the slugs and all that. But um, I mean, I'm nitpicking at this point because well, what they do do with it is like, it's pretty great. Like they spent their money on gore effects and explosions. Um, and I think they spent it well. Um, it really is. Uh, it's, a, I was again, surprised fun movie that we had tonight. Um, uh, the, the acting is, is I think something to behold in this movie, like especially that one couple, like just their awkwardness. And, you know, because it is done by, uh, uh, Spanish director, it has been dubbed. Like, you're getting a lot in this movie. For what I thought was just going to be like a good old, like, all American, kind of maybe um, ordinary slug movie. Like, I got more than that in this movie. <laughs> an and I, ordinary like, slug movie. An or, it's not an ordinary <laughs> American slug movie. This has got, you know, uh, it's got some influence in it. But again, I, from where uh, I think we're all surprised tonight, from where we thought it was going to go to where it did go. Um, I think it took us all by surprise. I like that. Um, uh, I think we, I think that's what we're all looking for. We're all looking for surprises and something new. And I haven't seen a lot of slug movies. Um, but I think this is going to be the holy trifecta of slug movies between this night of the creeps <laughs> and slither. I think that's it <laughs> so far. Um, but yeah, I recommend it. I think it's like, I think it's those three movies and, uh, it's a fun time. So I think you should check out slugs, the movie Colin, take us home. Um, yeah, I found this movie while I was, uh, not too long ago, actually. Um, I'm one of those things I'd always heard about. It was a new world movie. I think it, it was put out by new world. Um, yes. <clears throat> never saw it. Remember the articles in Fangoria about it and all that somehow passed it over, uh, found it while I was, uh, maybe, you know, uh, drinking a little bit too much. <laughs> I don't know. It was, it, <laughs> I thought it was the greatest movie ever made. I was <laughs> laughing so hard. I was like, this is fantastic. You know, with some of these lines, I'm just busting out laughing. Uh, it wasn't as intense tonight cause, uh, not as much of the, uh, you know, party additives, but, um, there's something about these movies. I mean, I'm trying to categorize them because they're all basically, uh, these, uh, you know, again, I'm saying it's like echo horror in some way, because it's all about idyllic American sleepy towns beset by subterranean menace that invades the town and threatens the welfare of all of the people there. This usually starts on the fringes of society, right? It's always like the derelicts or the homeless or somehow the cast offs that this happens. And so it's not noticed right away until eventually the thing like, you know, invades more higher into levels of society. And it's like, we got to deal with this. And then it's like these blue collar heroes have to kind of join together in order to vanquish the, the invading thing. And then all is well, but in the end, like we said, it's like, you got to remain vigilant because it's out there and it's coming back. And it usually is because something that, um, you know, in this part, you know, it's the idea that it's somehow it's corporate greed, you know, or something mm -hmm. or development. Like why building a mall is a bad thing, but you know, it's an ecological thing. It's like, because you're disturbing the land, you're like, you just got to be happy with what you have. You know, when mm -hmm. you start going and you broke ground over there, you disturb something that had been, you know, contained and you let it out. 
and now you're going to have to deal with it. So it's a, maybe like, uh, you know, that expansion, uh, uh, expansion of uh, civilization that goes where it shouldn't and then has to reap the uh, – the uh the awful well, i was gonna say rewards but that's not a they're, they're right we're always we're always we're reaching too far colin yeah we're, we're trying to get too much yeah so maybe that's what, maybe that maybe that you're right it's like if i'm gonna classify these movies that's the thing that you're looking at it's like does it fit that kind of structure it's like that's the eco horror movie um yeah i think this is a, the entertainment value in this obviously it's from the director of pieces this is i think a better made movie than pieces but pieces has yeah. a much higher to me like much higher entertainment value <laughs> that movie's a goddamn classic stone cold you know just because it's crazy uh this one you know we're ratcheting it down a little bit uh it's still very entertaining uh definitely enough to recommend it has enough of that kind of uh you know off kilter um you know international uh production so you do have the awkward line deliveries and certain lines that are like you know are the scenes in the car with him and the sheriff you know mike and the sheriff where they're like it doesn't feel like you've achieved that level of animosity yet but yet the characters are saying these lines that are like right. we hate i hate you and i hate you right you know? they, it's like they had a, a half hour argument before the cameras turned on right. yeah You're seeing the remnants of that yeah yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. no chill what is happening <laughs> yeah <laughs> So it kind of gives the scenes like an extra dimension where you're just like, wow, that's extreme, <laughs> you know, to be here like <laughs> right. right now. We just met you. Um, so, yeah, it has entertainment uh, value there. We were talking about like the acting. It's like some of the people, the one that stands out to me was um, the guy who played the guy who, whose head exploded. Like the whole time that like he was like, I got a headache honey that guy looked like he had a headache i don't know how he did this is a master <laughs> of acting it looked like his I forehead th- was bulging forward and his eyes were like half shut because he's like the weight of well, this oh a, my god that's just a spanish man yeah Colin, I, think. <laughs> I, think, I think that's it <laughs> this is the no, constant, yeah, he's always in pain he's, he's just a spanish <laughs> yeah so um yeah and the the uh like i said i think the thing that kind of like you know the added quality of this that i mean i I am thinking these are ingredients that i don't know that you need to have but they help like if you go all out with the gore if you give us tna if you have explosions in your movie like all this stuff i I know it sounds like dude you're talking about like the cheapest like most base level you know uh, uh reactionary kind of stuff but i'm like yeah but it works we have watched movies that didn't you know have the like they cheaped out on the gore or they cut away yeah. from the tna or they didn't have the they couldn't afford the explosions and it was like eh, it was okay but these ones which maybe it's a mediocre movie i don't know i thought it was entertaining as hell because i was constantly <laughs> interested in what i was seeing on the screen from beginning to end so uh yeah i would definitely say like uh yeah you gotta you gotta see slugs slugs right if you were listening to this show <laughs> watch it it's freak show approved that was all four of us said yeah. check out slugs so somebody just needs to go back and listen to all our like animals and eco terror episodes just those like anaconda we got this kingdom of the spiders <laughs> I kingdom of the summer, spiders yeah Bug. yeah yeah oh yeah we've we done a bunch of them over the yeah. <laughs> night of the lepus that's funny alligator best friend yeah yeah um so next week we're gonna watch a movie that's chosen by sean now the last three weeks four weeks even no three weeks the last three weeks we've been on a really good roll like it's been good Oh fuck! Yeah, shit on so, it again. I mean, <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, like this is your. You fuck every up like you always do, Sean. Are you gonna Are you gonna redeem yourself? What are we What are we doing next week? Probably not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> next week, uh, we're getting back into sequel territory. There we go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, right hitting the strong table. suits. <laughs> uh, so next week we are going to be watching Urban Legends Final Cut. Now, all right, because we did Urban okay. Legends, so you can actually we did cover that, so it's not going to be spoiler yes. territory. Go in, go back and listen to that episode first, right? Right, and then do Urban Legends. Now, I have a bit of advice for our audience when viewing this movie, because I have found that if you if you watch the movie with us, just watch it like a '70s Italian giallo movie. 
Okay, that's how I'm going to watch it. Go into it with that perspective. <laughs> okay. And I, think that's, and I think that's key. Okay. Uh, go with that. I'm going to hold you to All this right. now. Now I now okay. cuz I haven't seen it since the theater. So or I'm going to watch go it with, with that, that perspective. Colin, have that okay. in your head. Yes. Okay. All right. Now I'm intrigued. Congratulations. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Glad I could do that to Urban Legend's final cut. All right. That's right cuz the first one is Urban Legend. The second one is we'll Urban We'll get into it. We'll get into it. We'll get into it. It's a whole thing. <laughs> uh, so that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us then. And until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs>